So Android 15 Beta 2 is chock full of new features and a few features we actually glossed over or passed in our first run through the latest build. It's only fair that we share some new findings, so let's get into it. Before I do get into it though, I want you to subscribe to the channel because A, it feeds my ego and B, we're building a proper community and it was actually great to meet some of you in person at IO 2024 over in California. Real G's though, you've become channel members because you get all kinds of awesome stuff like wallpapers, behind the scenes content, exclusive merch drops and more as we develop out one of what I would consider the best YouTube channel membership offerings on this platform. Hit the join button to learn more and support the channel. So the first major change that we didn't spot right away, personally I'm actually blaming that California heat, is in the haptic department. Google has added adaptive vibration to Pixel phones and this new option which is found under the vibration and haptics menu in settings defaults to off. Google explains that the setting will automatically adjust the vibration strength of your device based upon surroundings and other sensor factors. The animation shown on the page for adaptive vibration shows that the vibration strength lowers when it's on a table, implying it, that's what Pixel phones will do when the setting is actually turned on. In practice, this is separate from an existing adaptive alert vibration option, which can lessen vibration strength when the phone is facing up and its screen is on. That feature debuted on the Pixel 7a a few years ago, and it's hard to see if this actually does make a difference when people are calling you or you get a notification, at least at this stage, but it should be useful if you, like me, Put your phone on multiple surface types and I'm excited to see just how this developed over time and get really into it but it is a new option something we didn't share first time around. That's not all though because another minor but notable vibration based tweak is when adjusting the volume slider from maximum to minimum. If you hit that max volume when using the slider menu it'll vibrate or if you set the volume to zero it'll also vibrate. This is super similar to the brightness slider effect which is practically the same but it's nice to know when you're using this even if your device is set to silent it will toggle these you'll be able to see that it's a nice little optional extra feedback another interesting change you might notice can be found in the storage section in beta 1 and older builds the storage section has a system storage category which binds these all together in android 15 beta 2 there is an enhanced system section that indicates the amount of storage that temporary system files are taking up. Tapping the temporary system files option pulls up a little dialog box which indicates what this volume is actually referring to and it means stuff like device caches and other temporary system files related to Android itself. Sadly at least as far as we can tell there's no way to purge this from this section but at least you now know how much space Android is taking on your device and it is categorized accordingly. Oddly enough this is listed in Android 15 beta 1 as Android 14 for now but we do expect that to change it's merely just a text error. In our last video we also told you that app pairs were limited to tablets and foldables well it turns out this isn't actually the case at all so it's a mistake on our part. On your phone you can actually save app pairs to your home screen without having to do funky things like adjust the DPI or make any other system setting changes. We don't know why, but Google only advertised this feature for tablets and foldables, which is why we didn't notice it, but you can access this on a smaller screen right now. The difference being that with here, you have no save app pairs button in the recent multitasking menu. So you have to tap the side-by-side -side app icons. I actually really like this feature on phones because you can practically save any combo, at least if they work in split screen mode, to quickly get into productivity options and more productivity aware settings. Just remember that the access method is slightly different than it is on tablet or pixel fold. It is a really cool function though, and you can save these right to your homepage. I'm definitely gonna have a go at setting some up later today. To help improve the security of the device, you can also change the screen timeout length on your pixel. But when you do this, you now need to enter your pin or biometric data before this change is saved. This does make a lot of sense though, given that the screen timeout length actually dictates how long your phone will stay unlocked before relocking and therefore becoming a bit more secure. It doesn't matter what length you set, you still need to do this, unless you don't have a pin or biometrics in use on your Pixel. And added in beta one, the mobile or cellular network security page has also received a slightly different landing screen to help explain more of what this section and the associated toggles will offer you. It's super minor, but it might actually help people better understand just what these options do. If you enable the multiple users option in Android 15 beta 2, this now lets you set your Google account picture 
as your user profile image. And this helps just unify the image that you'll see in places like the settings application in the top right, or even in the status bar. Another notable with this change is that it appears to be handled by a new application, which is called Google Pixel Avatar app, which likely automatically updates anywhere that your Android profile picture is appearing and whenever there's a change. You'll know that your profile icon is pulled from your Google account when you're doing this though, because there will be a G icon, the Google classic G icon in the bottom right corner. So it's easy to see that you're using a Google account picture. So when we combine these extra functions that we found since our first hands-on with our previous hands-on, there really is quite a lot to dive into, at least compared to the developer preview and a lot of last year's Android 14 updates, which were relatively minor. I know, of course, we're spoiled with Pixel feature drops bringing us new stuff practically every few months, but this is all of the good stuff for Android 15, at least the beta phase, and we wanted to share with you. Be sure to go check out our beta 2 content, our previous hands-on, if you're wondering why there isn't much going on here, and thank you to the absolute legends on screen. Now, we love you. You motivate us to keep providing the best Android coverage possible. And I wanna ask you quickly before I head off, What's your favorite feature so far in the Android beta? Do you find that this is a stable release? Are you running this on your devices and having lots of fun or are you having lots of problems? Let us know down in the comment sections below. We haven't asked you for a while just how you're getting on, but thanks for watching and I will speak to you later. Just jumping at the end of this video to tell you how to get hold of our Android 15 beta 2 wallpapers, you can either do one of two things. You can head over to our original video, hit like on that video. If it hits 3000 likes, we'll give them away. Or if you're desperate for these, you can join as a channel member and get early access to all of our wallpapers before they're released. All of our wallpapers that we do give away for free, but you can get them early. You can get them even if we don't hit those like goals go ahead and hit that join button and see for them for yourself. If not, head over to the original video, hit like, and you should be able to get hold of these wallpapers when it does hit that like goal.